Hey everyone, if you're new here, welcome to the Cozy Cauldron, and if you're returning, welcome back. So today we're doing a reading on your unknown spiritual gifts or talents. So what have you been developing lately, or will recently learn about yourself that you have a talent for in terms of your spirituality? This could be um, something about your intuition, um, a gift you have in that regard, um, anything of this sort around that topic is what we're going to be asking today. So I'll have the timestamps below for you to skip ahead, but I just want to say I've got this new oracle deck which I'm using for each group. It's called the Chakra Love um, Oracle, and basically it's cards of different uh, gemstones and their chakra associations, and it has like a little phrase to sort of help you reflect and think. So for group one, we have clear quartz. For group two, we have garnet, and for group three, we have sodalite. So feel free to take as much time as you need to pick a pile, you know, breathe in, meditate, whatever works for you. It's okay if you're drawn to more than one pile, and it's definitely okay if you want to watch all three. There's no harder rules to this. And before I jump into the reading, I wanted to quickly mention, so if you've been following my channel for a bit, you may notice that these are um, new cards, new tarot cards, and, you know, I recently picked up these cards from a metaphysical store a few days ago, and I'm so excited about them. So, if you guys have been following my channel, you know that I really like, um, antique tarot cards, vintage tarot cards, ones that are more difficult to find or have a very unique art style. So, this deck was designed in the around 1960s, 1970s by an uh, artist named Walter Wegmuller, excuse my pronunciation on that, um, and he was a Romani person living in Switzerland. His parents were Romani and he was Romani, and he basically took inspiration from his Romani heritage to design this deck. And it's definitely I'll show you a few of the cards. It's probably the most visually stunning deck I own. The artwork is so vivid and amazing, so I can't wait to use it today. It's really got some great energy to it. But yeah, I just wanted to show you all this new deck I have and what we're using today because I find it so fascinating. Okay. Enough with that, I'll get started with the reading, and I'll be starting off with group one. Hey group one, if you all chose the clear quartz card, then this is your reading. So I'm going to go ahead and flip it over and we'll see what it says. So your card says peace, and stillness the answer will be revealed. And right here it says crown chakra. So I'm going to put this over here, and we'll start off with some tarot cards. So we're asking the question of, like, what spiritual gifts do you have? What spiritual gifts or talents are you developing or unaware of at the moment? Oops, that's a lot of cards just flipped over, but I'll take the top one, which is the Ace of Wands. Let's get a few more cards. The Wheel of Fortune. Okay, I'm already getting a message, but I just want to get two more cards. Oh, that's a lot. That's a lot. The Seven of Pentacles. And one more. Death which, uh, this artwork is just so stunning. Okay. Now, let me just quickly I'm gonna push this around a little bit, and I'm going to grab a few oracle cards. I think I'll start off with the Wisdom of the Oracle deck. Oops. You got To Be Fair. Now let's do a Moonology card. 
and then I think I'll do a few tea leaf cards. And special gifts. These three jumped out to me. Okay. So I'm going to take all three of these. You got Look at the Bigger Picture, Full Moon and Sagittarius, A Time for Healing, Balsamic Moon, and Your Commitment is Being Tested, First Quarter Moon. So let me just push this up a little bit. And sorry if there's a little noise in the background. I'll go make sure it quiets down a bit but i'll get one more card which is the tea leaf oracle okay a few jumped out you got grasshopper situations imbalance that require careful handling and dog protection from a powerful friend so let me make sure right there now give me a second to breathe in take in the messages and then i'll get started with your reading Okay, group one, so what I'm really seeing for you guys in terms of your spiritual talents or gifts, ones that are unfolding or starting to become stronger, I see yours as being very focused around manifestation with this Wheel of Fortune and the Ace of Wands being the first tarot cards to pop out. I think your ability to manifest things in reality is going to be getting stronger and more potent things will be happening faster but i see that um there's sort of perhaps a step to take in order to improve this if that makes sense and i'm really seeing that with the crown chakra peace card right here as well as the seven of pentacles and your moonology card so i feel like with the Seven of Pentacles, I get the sense that manifestation and things surrounding manifestation is something that you have already been working on for a while. Whether you are aware of it or not, I feel like you have been working on manifestation for a good portion of your life. And I feel like you have been consciously trying to improve upon it recently but i feel like you are hitting a period of frustration where you feel like you're not getting the results as quickly as you would like or you feel like your manifestations just aren't strong enough things of that sort but i'm i'm being told to tell you not to worry about it because this is something you are innately very talented with is manifestation and bringing your dreams and thoughts into reality. With this Ace of Wands and Wheel of Fortune, I get a very strong potential and energy from it. But I guess it's, you know, like how every Ace is always the beginning card, so it's that sort of opportunity and potential that needs to be nourished. So it's sitting there, this strong talent is there sort of underneath the surface it's just discovering the right i don't know the word the right potion or the right way of doing things for you is what you really need to figure out because i feel like perhaps you've been researching it in terms of maybe videos online or books and you've been trying different methods or different ways that other people do manifestation, but I feel like for you, you need to sort of go at it in a very unique way that is entirely like independent, like independent of anything else. It's entirely from you. So I think the reason why you maybe have been finding your manifestations as not progressing as much as you would like is because 
you sort of need to figure out a, a way to manifest that is unique to you, not how other people do it. And that's what I'm getting. Like, intuitively, you know what you need to do, if this makes sense. So, if you can put aside the time to sit with yourself and really reflect upon moments in your life where something you really wanted came to fruition and what sort of actions or thought patterns you had at that time you know look for patterns in your past successful manifestations and really piece things together on what works super well for you and i'm really getting that with look at the bigger picture like looking back at your past work or things that you have done in the past without realizing it was manifestation and seeing why it worked because I feel like manifestation comes very instinctually to you like it's sort of built within you and I feel like maybe a lot as a child or being younger you were able to manifest things without realizing that's what you were doing but once you got older and you started studying it more you were learning a lot but you're also sort of almost setting a roadblock in front of yourself by trying to emulate what other people do to manifest or other people's practices to manifest i feel like your way of manifesting is wholly unique to you and because of that, it is very powerful. So I'm seeing that there sort of needs to be a, a complete like turnaround in how you have been approaching manifestation lately. Like I'm getting the sense that there's a need to return to your childlike self and your youth, what you did then and see what's different now. And that could definitely tie into a time for healing. A sort of maybe healing something that happened in the past that has sort of blocked your manifestations or views of manifestations, maybe without you realizing that this event blocked these things. And perhaps going back and really working on healing this because I see a sense of frustration around your progress at the moment with the your commitment is being tested I get the sense that you feel like you've been putting in so much work into this and you're not seeing as much results as you would like like with the seven of pentacles I feel like you are seeing like small results but not close to what you were either used to be able to um used to be able to do or what you would like to do now with this grasshopper situations and balance that require careful handling i know that sounds a bit more intense than what i'm getting and i think for me and my intuition when i hear that that makes me think of you kind of, the word and phrasing that's coming out is you taking things more seriously than it needs to be taken. And like you're seeing this way of manifestation or different ways of manifestation and maybe it's kind of like a thought process where you can't think any bad thoughts or something bad will happen or, or something like that where it feels very tense and difficult to balance and I'm getting more so with this protection from a powerful friend that it's not as, you know, intense and serious as you feel like it is. Manifestation for you is not a, you know, if you do this one thing, it's going to not work out at all, you know? Because um, I'm getting this very, like, intense... It's either this or that energy of the grasshopper. Like, no in-betweens or no compromises. It's either this or that. But I don't think that's actually the case for your situation. I think that's how you, you may be viewing it. 
which is very um, polarized, which can definitely be blocking your manifestations. So I'm getting a lot, especially with this crown chakra peace card and stillness to answer will be revealed. I'm sort of getting the message for you to step back from your learnings of manifestation. You know, whatever you have been studying in regards to manifestation, you know, sort of stop. If you're reading any books, watching videos, stop with all that and really take a second to or several days of more intense self-reflection within yourself to, you know, think about what you did when you were younger, think about what feels right to you, what does not feel right to you, you know, really sort these things out and meditate on it. And I really th think if you do this, you will figure everything out in terms of how you best manifest and like find that key that makes everything click and then you know you're manifesting everything super quickly and very strongly so i'm definitely getting this sense that you have been sort of throwing everything you can at this obstacle of trying to make things manifest but in reality it's like that sort of hanged man or hermit energy where you need to go in and remove outside influences and distractions around how you manifest and sort of make a manifestation method by yourself that works for you. And that could also, you know, involve taking different bits from different practices and manifestation that you've learned over time and sort of mashing them together and one way of manifesting that works for you that could definitely be the case and you know i'm not saying that you necessarily have to come up with a completely new unheard of way to manifest that's not what i'm saying but sort of finding something that's unique to you and how you manifest because once you even rediscover it if you did this when you were younger, or, you know, make it now, you're going to see great levels of progress in everything that you are manifesting. It's almost like I'm getting the image of, like, a back burner of projects that haven't been able to move, and then once you sort of figure out this way of manifesting that works for you, it's like every back burner project is coming through the queue and getting finished if the, that makes sense i have like an image of a um a factory sort of line and a bunch of machines getting piled up in the end because the conveyor belt's broken and then something fixes it and they all come down and are able to be finished that's what i'm getting very strongly i know that's very specific but it's uh what came to mind so I want to quickly read the To Be Fair card from the booklet, Wisdom of the Oracle. So let me find it really quick. Sometimes it takes me a while to find the card, but this time I was quick. Okay. The essential meanings are balance, justice, a need to consider options, mutual benefit, and the law of cause and effect. I find that interesting with a need to consider options because I was mentioning with this grasshopper card that it very much feels like a it must be this or that you know it's very polarized very black and white the view right now like i don't think you're noticing all of the options and different ways you could go about doing this so the oracle's message is life offers experiences that are challenging and experiences that are nourishing yet over time they strike a balance you move from being you move from being from stasis to doing, from discovering to loving to letting go to being again. Life is a pendulum swinging between all of these states. You will always oscillate back and forth between doing and being. If you are not content with where you are at this moment, remember that all experiences have their place. Accept them without judgment and you'll see how the universe adjusts to perfect balance. You reap what you sow, 
for every cause there is an effect wondrous things will be revealed now i find it interesting they mention um let me see you know accept them without judgment and sort of you will go back and forth between doing and being so i feel like right now is a period of being you're trying to make it a period of doing but you are being forced into a period of just being and existing because you know you're trying to be um, guided into a way of like looking at yourself and looking at your past to better be able to unlock your manifestations and unlock your you know spiritual gift around manifestation because i see like i said at first you are very talented at manifestation whether or not you realize it or whether or not you experience talent with manifestation as a child or not you are very good with it it's just your way of manifesting cannot be done in the way that other people do it you have to go back to your roots is what i'm hearing and find something that fits for you so one thing that just popped up with the phrase go back to your roots is you know if you come from different cultural backgrounds that have specific spiritual practices if you have not um, delved into those practices like their manifestations I would definitely check that out and sort of gain inspiration from cultural experiences and maybe things that your ancestors did to manifest but yeah group one what I'm really getting for you guys just to give a quick recap is that your spiritual gift and talent really revolves around manifestation very strong powerful manifestation but i feel like either in your adult life or recently you have hit a roadblock where you just keep throwing things at this roadblock trying to you know push it aside when in reality what you need to do to overcome this roadblock in your manifestation is sort of sitting back and looking at how you're manifesting because there's a sort of polarized view very black and white view towards manifestation at the moment and you need to learn or realize that you have more options than you think like with this death card you need to let go of something understand that your commitment is being tested right now but this is mostly just a time to heal go back to your roots to your past and find a way of manifesting that fits for you individually so yeah, group one, I hope this reading resonated. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I would appreciate it if you could give my video a like and subscribe to my channel. It really helps out. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you all next time. Bye. Hey group two, if you all chose the Garnet card, then this is your reading. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this over and we'll read what it says. So it says, security, to feel more secure, deepen your connection with nature. And then right here it says, root chakra. So I'm going to go ahead and put this up here. And then we'll start off with some tarot cards. So today we're asking the question of, you know, what are your hidden spiritual gifts or talents? Or like, what have you been developing lately in terms of your spirituality? group two. Don't know why I said group one. Oh, you guys got the uh, ten of swords. Let's see, group two. Spiritual gifts and talents. You got the chariot. Let's get two more. The Ace of Wands. Get one more card. The King of Cups. Okay. I'm already getting a message. 
around what your gift is, I think first I just want to, I want to get some oracle cards, but first I want to move these a little bit, and then let's do some wisdom of the oracle cards first. So group two. Oops, that's a lot of cards that just flipped over. Group two, spiritual gifts and blessings. Hmm, I got soulmates. Let's do Moonology card. Moonology Oracle cards. Let's see. A win-win outcome is forecast and hold your vision fixed moon let me put that right there and then let's grab a few tea leaf cards and then we can get started with your reading Got candle you will be shown the way get one more Butterfly, it changed for the better. Okay, so give me a second to um, arrange the cards a little bit, make sure everything's in frame, and then I'm going to take a second to breathe, take in the messages, and then I will get started with your reading. Okay, group two, so I'm getting um, a few different sort of spiritual abilities coming through, so I'm not sure if the majority of the viewers and you all have picked group two, but what is sticking out to me the most, which is just popping in my head so much with all of these cards, is um, astral projection, sort of um, dream work and astral projection. Because when I see this chariot card, how how it looks it's very like whimsical and this soulmates card everything feels very hazy and foggy almost like you know how in dream states you will be in a certain location but it's not quite right certain things are off that let you know it's a dream so i'm getting the sense that you have a very strong connection with you know the sleep state and the unconscious and the messages you can get while dreaming or the astral projection that you can do while dreaming i think you can be very talented at astral projection if that is something you are interested in because this chariot card i just think of lots of like movement in dreams moving through planes through dreams but I'm also getting, you know, if that is not something you're interested in, I'm getting a lot about um, getting messages through your dreams and deciphering dreams and dream work with this King of Cups and whatnot. I'm getting, you know, a lot about dream journaling and maybe you've had a few dreams that ended up coming true in the past. But one thing that I'm seeing that is sort of coming up as a bit of an obstacle for you developing this skill is this Ten of Swords and this Root Chakra Security. So with the Ten of Swords, I'm getting the sense that you don't have great um, control over possibly astral projection or controlling your dreams or sometimes the messages you get, you get in your dreams. And sometimes maybe that can be anxiety inducing. I can also get that perhaps sometimes you get um, a lot of nightmares or very vivid dreams that can, you know, cause you to feel quite panicked the next day or just out of sorts. And, you know, I'm getting that this is, if you experience this, this is because of a lack of groundedness 
you should maybe look into connecting more with your root chakra and connecting with nature. I'm getting a lot about walking around barefoot. If that is something you are able to do, spending time barefoot, spending a lot of time more grounding because when you find yourself really gifted in these sort of dreamlike watery states, it can make it feel difficult to, you know, be grounded in daily life when you're so connected to um, the dream realm and things of that sort. It can make it difficult to be solid and connected on earth. And I could see how perhaps this lack of um, groundedness could be like causing you nervousness or anxiety or just exhaustion from your dreams. I'm getting the sense that oftentimes if you have these really intense dreams, it's you wake up and it's like you didn't rest at all. You were your mind was too busy showing you different things and giving you all sorts of messages and it's just chaotic. So another thing that is popping up is perhaps one thing that could help would be um, protection for dreams or dream sachets to help you sleep. So for example, a dream sachet, you take a little piece of like cloth and fill it with different herbs that help ensure restful sleep and sweet dreams. So for example, chamomile, lavender, those kinds of things in the sachet. And then you'd put that underneath your pillow with the intention of having um, calm dreams or even no dreams, just straight up sleeping, deep, very deep sleep. Because I get the sense that you you don't have very good control or very good boundaries surrounding your dream state and the dreams you have and what you see and what you experience and how intense they are. I, I get the sense that it sometimes maybe you may stay up later than you would like to because you're like, oh, I'm just going to have an intense dream or I'm going to have a really restless night anyway, so I'll just stay up. Um, but I'm getting that, you know, if you work on grounding yourself and almost, I'm getting where like putting up boundaries, getting like protection for your sleep, so maybe different crystals and whatnot, as well as sachets and just things like that, as well as um, words of affirmation about your own, like, comfort and whatnot. I don't know why that came through. Like, words of affirmation around your protection. Like, I'm protected, I'm safe, I'm loved, I'm going to sleep well, this and that. Um, things like that may help a bit. But I'm seeing once you sort of get a, gr like a grasp on this um, ability, I can see it being quite beneficial to you. You could possibly be able to uh, dream about people before you meet them or get insight into your life or certain things and perhaps it could be, you know, it could be helpful for you in your overall life. Over <laughs> I can't speak today, I'm tongue-tied. Your overall life, but it could also be uh, maybe helpful for others is what I'm getting. This candle, you'll be shown the way I get the sense that perhaps you could have a dream where you are offered some advice from like a guide or something, some sort of advice on how to better work with your dream state and work with this gift of yours in order to really make it work to your benefit and not something that makes it difficult for you to sleep or gives you anxiety. I'm getting reminded of an experience I've had once before, um, especially with this butterfly card. It's, it's very interesting. There was, I'll try and make it quick, but there was a period in my life when I was having very severe anxiety and I kept seeing these um, very dark black butterflies around my house. I'd never seen them before. And I was so anxious, I was worried, oh, does this mean a bad thing's going to happen? You know, when you don't really have control over your intrusive thoughts. 
And I started to get very worked up about it. And I ended up having this incredibly vivid dream that I still remember so clearly to this day. I was in a field with all of these butterflies around, the ones I'd been seeing, and a voice boomed down around me, explaining to me that the butterflies were not black, they were blue. And then I was surrounded by these butterflies and shown that they were actually a very deep navy blue and they sort of shifted color in the light. And I kid you not, about two days later, without telling anyone this dream, my mom came in to tell me that the butterflies were not black, they were blue. <laughs> and it was the wildest experience. And I, a long story short, I get the sense that perhaps you get experiences like this often or you will be getting experiences like that often where you will be getting messages coming in from ancestors or guides and a dream state that will sort of give you advice or tell you something or show you something to do that will give you insight into the future maybe the next few days weeks months whatever else so i'm getting one thing to sort of help train this um talent of yours and to get a sort of grasp on it is one a dream journal i think a dream journal will be really helpful for you to work on learning how to decipher dream messages you may get and two um study with like books out there that have gone into the practices of analyzing dreams or the practices of astral projection or you know controlling your dreams things of that sort um, do research onto it, listen to other people's experiences. Um, I know astral projection, I've never done it myself, I don't know a ton about it, but I do know and have heard that sometimes it can be a little scary for some people, so, you know, like I said, this is all within your control, and if astral projection is not something you want to do at all, that's perfectly fine. I think the message for you then is mostly around, um, deciphering messages in your dreams because I do get the sense that your dreams give you lots of messages but whatever um, avenue you end up taking with this talent of yours this card is very encouraging a win-win outcome is forecast it's like whether or not you decide to sort of pursue learning more about your dreams and how to work with them or whether you just kind of work on grounding to get control of it and get better sleep. Whatever the situation, it's going to turn out well for you. I'm not getting anything that, oh, you need to do this or you need to do that. I'm just getting, you have this talent. It is open for you to delve into it further and learn more about it. But if that is not something you're interested in, it is also good and okay for you to work on grounding just to sort of get better sleep. With this hold your vision, it's giving me a sort of a sense of what I just mentioned with the story about the sort of vision and being spoken to in a dream. So like I said, if you if you are interested in developing this fervor, definitely write down your dreams more and try and find patterns especially the very vivid dreams and like right when you wake up write them down so you can hold that vision of what just happened because i know it can be hard to remember dreams after a while of waking up so you know if you can try and like write down the dreams right when you wake up or um, record your voice and speak about what happened in your dream if you don't want to write them down because trust me I understand when I immediately wake up I don't really want to grab a pen and paper immediately and write down everything I'm too groggy for that so if you feel like that recording your voice explaining things maybe would be a better option now on everything I'm getting which is one of the reasons why I was thinking maybe a lot of people picked this group is not as much dream related as it is sort of sign related especially with this butterfly so if you are not really resonating so much with in terms of dreams 
I'm getting that you could be particularly talented in seeing signs or being shown signs or being more in tune to messages being sent to you, whether that be butterflies, certain strange events with wildlife, things of that sort. I can get that as well. I'm also getting that, you know, once again, if it's not dream related, I'm getting that you could be quite um, clairvoyant. Like perhaps this is something I myself experience. Perhaps sometimes you're doing something, maybe brushing your teeth, washing dishes, and you're sort of, your mind is taken back by a sort of almost like a daydream, but it's not controlled of a certain sequence of events. And then shortly after those events happen, I could see that being the case for you as well. If the dream situation does not resonate, where you have sort of clairvoyant gift where sometimes you get a sort of vision, short vision of things that may happen or will happen. And I just want to clarify for those of us out there that have a bit more anxiety, this, you'll be able to tell the difference between it being anxiety and your intuition. Whenever I have had these sort of clairvoyant moments, it's, there's not a single feeling of anxiety. It's a complete calmness and it's never anything bad happening. It's just, in my experience, one time it was just an, me watching myself order something in a drive through and it not being available. And then an hour later, that exact scenario happening and that thing I was trying to order not being available. So kind of like that situation. So don't worry if you, you know, experienced intrusive thoughts or worst case scenarios. Um, you know, that is not really what I'm talking about here. You know, your intuition is a loving thing that is not trying to, you know, scare you or harm you. But yeah, group two, I guess to give an overall review, I feel like a lot of people maybe picked this group because there's a lot of different abilities sticking out to me. The one that is the strongest has to do with dreams and um, messages through dreams, possibly astral projection, and you know, really honing in on that. But the other abilities that are coming through strongly would be um, being very in tune to signs happening around you and clairvoyance. But this is all I have for you today, group two. I hope it resonated. I hope you enjoyed it. If it did, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like and subscribe to my channel. It really helps out here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you all next time. Bye! Hey group three, if you all chose the Sodalite card, then this is your reading. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this over and we'll read what it says. So it says vulnerability. Showing vulnerability is a sign of strength and that is the throat chakra. So I'm going to go ahead and put this up here and then we'll get started with some tarot cards. So today we're asking the question of what are your spiritual gifts or talents? Group three. You got the Justice card and the Six of Pentacles. Let's get two more. The Three of Wands. Let's get one more. Okay, that's a, a bit more than one. Okay, there we go. Seven of Swords. Very interesting. Now let's let's move on to some Oracle cards. I think I'll start off with the Wisdom of the Oracle deck. Guys got observer. And let's do some moonology cards now.
show the world the real you. And let's get one more of these. Super great. A new start is coming. New moon. Let's get some tea leaf cards and then we'll get started with your reading. So group three. Jeez. Oh. Interesting, the month of September came out, which is this month. So that's pretty interesting. Oh. Got the purse, pay attention to your finances. Let's get one more. And wealth. It's very interesting with the purse. Okay, so let me just make sure everything is in frame, which it looks like it is. And now I'm going to take a breath, take in the messages, and then we'll get started with your reading. Okay, group three, so what I'm really seeing for you guys as you're your ability is, I get the sense that you're an empath or you're really good with reading people's emotions or like, you know, seeing how people feel and feeling that exact feeling. I'll move a few things down so I can be a little closer to them, but um, yeah, I'm getting the sense that you are really quite like an empath, like you're a very strong empath, and I think anytime you walk in the room, you kind of feel like whatever everyone else is feeling. Whenever you talk to someone, you can feel their feelings about a situation or experience. And this is both, I think, a blessing, but sometimes it can also feel too overwhelming. So because of your ability to tap into other people's emotions and their, you know, state of mind, I think you're really good at helping other people heal and sort of like giving to others with the Six of Pentacles. You're a very loving person who's very, I, like, you bring the vulnerable side out of people. You have a very calming energy that allows people to open up and it's very healing and very understanding and you know how other people feel so you're very tactful when it comes to de-escalating situations and whatnot but i see how this is a double-edged sword because if you're not very experienced in properly protecting yourself from energies you are quite the magnet for people who you know, would be considered energy vampires, people who come to you only to dump their emotions and then leave, leaving you feeling drained. And I'm getting the sense with the Seven of Swords, the Justice, um, and these cards about money, I'm getting the sense that maybe something like that is happening to you right now that is sort of sapping you dry of energy not leaving anything for yourself, some sort of situation. I think it's a person in your life who is, you know, gives you a call just to complain about something or tell you something they're worried about, and then they don't bother to ask anything about you, and then they sort of leave now that they have, you know, taken advantage of your abilities of being an empath to make themselves feel better. But as a result, they have left you feeling very empty. So I'm kidding with your empath abilities. What you're being encouraged to do right now in order to better harness them and get better control over them is to really set boundaries. I'm getting strongly that perhaps wearing obsidian or certain gems could be very helpful for you in terms of setting energetic boundaries for people around you but also in general setting boundaries by being completely honest about how you feel about something 
is very heavily encouraged with this show the world the real you. Oftentimes people who are empaths can be um, people pleasers as well because you feel everything the other person is feeling and you don't want to disappoint them because, I mean, it's it's very hard to do that. It's very hard to draw lines as an empath, but I'm getting that you're very strongly being encouraged to understand that it is okay and actually a very good thing for you to say to someone, you know, hey, I actually can't talk right now because I'm having me time or actually I can't help you with this thing because I am tapped out at the moment. Um, I think that's really a big part of show the world the real you is being more honest about your own emotions and how you are feeling at the moment because I think you are so well like in touch with other people's emotions, emotions around situations, the feelings of situations. And I think you're actually quite talented as well at um, sort of taking bad emotions from other people and turning them into sort of good, like a lot of comforting and healing. But you're not so good at setting those boundaries and really nourishing yourself because when you have this talent, of being an empath, you know, it's really important for you to have your alone time and set up boundaries with just about anyone in your life. Because this person, this person who may be draining you, they may not be aware that they're draining you. And it, it may not be any intent of just using you for comfort and then leaving you. They may not be aware of the effect they're having on you, so being open about it will maybe help whoever's affecting you realize, oh, maybe I should step back a bit. I'm getting with this justice card and with this feeling of you being an empath that you are really good at settling differences between people. I think in a way people can look at you as a leader because you bring such comfort to a group of people. So I think that's another part of show the world the real you is you have a lot of insight on situations because you can feel exactly how everyone involved is feeling. And I think as a result, you do a really good job in the role as someone who would maybe be seen as a peacemaker or someone sort of um, leveling the plane that came up assigning roles, you do really well, I think, in a leadership position once you learn how to establish better boundaries because you are able to understand what the people around you are feeling. Now, I want to read this observer card really quick because what I'm getting with that intuitively is that it really ties into your sort of empath abilities, because of your ability to feel how other people are feeling, you may also be able to just observe them and see how they act as a result, how it's affecting how they behave, their mental state, things of that sort, which really allows you to read people really well and be very tactical when it comes to dealing with people. So let's, let's see what the booklet says. The essential meanings are perspective, objectivity, neutral observation from a distance. I like that with the justice card, sort of neutral observation. So the oracle's message is, most people see the world through a personal lens. They closely identify with their feelings and experiences, so much so that they come to believe that these are the only reality. That's so interesting with you being an empath, because you're not like that at all. You have a sort of view of how everyone is experiencing things and feeling things. And there are times when you need distance in order to gain perspective and understand your circumstances from a more neutral vantage point. Now is one of those times in your life. This is a perfect moment for you to begin to do some exploring. Instead of only considering yourself, consider what you need to understand about the conditions, people, culture, and environment you're engaged with now. You'll be so happy you did illumination is the miracle you seek and will indeed find. That's really interesting because I don't, 
I don't get the sense that you have a hard time doing that because of your empathic abilities. I get more so the sense that this is something that is occurring for you all the time that you don't really know how to turn it off or turn down the knob, so to say, and tune things out a little bit. Because I'm getting a sense similar to Pile 2. There's a sense of a lack of control where it's either happening all the time or it's happening so much that it's just draining you. And that's what I'm really getting with your empathic abilities is that you are not able to really or haven't really learned how to shield yourself. And so it's kind of just seeping out of you wherever you go. And I think it's just making you really tired. But with this new start is coming, I definitely see that, you know, perhaps from you listening to this reading, you'll be taking some time to really learn how to better shield yourself from the energies out there, both good and bad. Because sometimes, you know, you just need to be able to feel what you're feeling solely, not what everyone else is feeling on top of it, just you. I think by doing this, it will help you get more refined with your empathic abilities too. Now with this wealth and purse card and September card, I find it really interesting that the sub September card um, popped out and it's the month of September. But what I'm seeing with this purse and wealth, it's really tying in for me with the Seven of Swords and Six of Pentacles. With what I was saying earlier about perhaps someone taking advantage of the energy you put that put out there and the kindness you give to the world. So I could definitely just be seeing it as maybe a slight little, like a little warning about, hey, you know, maybe there's some people out there who are taking advantage of you. Maybe that is financially. Maybe it's in other ways, such as um, taking emotionally from you in other ways. And I think that's just really to highlight that part of your life right now, that challenge you're going through, and further emphasizing the need to stick up for yourself and put out some boundaries out there. Because I think you're so able to see other people's situations, points of views, and feelings that sometimes I think you can allow people to do things you know is not kind to you due to feeling bad for them. But there's definitely a great need for you to, in order for your own well-being and just for developing these empathic skills, if you want to sharpen them and get better control over them, you need to put up boundaries. One thing that's coming through very strongly is possibly finding a community of people who can give you advice on the situation. That's coming through this Three of Wands and Six of Pentacles. If you can find some people, maybe more experienced empaths, um, wiser empaths who have had years of time to learn about themselves, and try speaking to them and learning what they do to shield themselves from other people's emotions and energy all the time, and figure out how you can practice that and incorporate that into your own daily life so that you can pick and choose when you want to tune into other people. Because like I said before, right now it feels like there's no off switch, it's constantly on, and I think as a result, you are very often drained after social interactions. I'm also getting with this vulnerability bit that I get the sense, as I was saying earlier, that maybe people come to you often to dump their troubles on you and leave feeling much lighter. I feel like you may need someone that you can talk to because you are always the person I think people are going to to discuss emotional issues or certain things that are weighing them down. And I think what you need right now to help you with your empathic abilities is some attention towards your own emotions, which includes being vulnerable, finding someone who is willing to listen to you for a second and letting you for once be the person who is letting releasing things 
rather than being the person, you know, taking everything that the other person is releasing. But yeah, group three, to give a quick overview or recap, I'm seeing very strong ways coming through that you are very talented in terms of your impact being an empath, your empathic abilities, you are able to read a room so well and you are always able to tell what other people are feeling, how they react to situations, you're very observant of this, but like I was saying, there's no off switch and you don't have the boundaries up in place to really protect your energy at the moment. So in order to better improve your daily quality of life, help protect your energy, improve on these empathic abilities, you're being suggested or you're given the suggestion to you know, put up boundaries, tell people when you don't have the energy or space to help them, you know, say no to things, um, carry around obsidian, and really find people who have been empaths or are empaths and maybe a bit older than you to have more life experience and learn from them of how they have learned to deal with it and how they have learned to maybe tune in and out of other people's emotions. And also, just a quick thing with this, once again with the boundaries, you know, if someone has been dumping on you or kind of taking advantage of you, you're just being asked to um, pay attention to that and maybe step back a bit, whether that be financially or emotionally. The ad group three, I hope you all enjoyed the reading. I hope it resonated. If it did, I would appreciate it if you give a like to this video and subscribe to my channel. It really helps out here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you all next time. Bye!